Hey guys, good morning. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Sheikh Rashid Javed. I'm here with another video on CompTIA Cloud Essentials. So this is your exam CL002, CL002, which is CompTIA Cloud Essentials from CompTIA. So let's see when you open this link is going to take you to the CompTIA Cloud Essentials course. So even you can go to Google and search for CompTIA Cloud Essentials and you are going to open this link which I have already opened. So let me open this again. It, it will uh, let you know about this exam CompTIA Cloud Essentials what this exam is all about. You can download an exam guide you can check the overview, exam details, how to prepare for this exam, how to renew this exam. This is going to help you to bring value to the organization. This, these are the skills you are going to learn. Cloud concepts, business principles of cloud environment, management and technical operations, governance, risk compliance and security for the cloud. Jobs you can land with this exam. Exam details. Here you can fill your name and all to see the exam objectives and practice questions 75 questions in 60 minutes and you can also go to online testing center to see how to plan or how to uh, schedule this exam then you got uh, you know other other information here related to exam how you can start preparing for, uh, for this exam with uh, this material here how to go for labs and all instructor led training you can find it here how to renew this exam so about me my name is Sheikh Rashid Javid I work as a corporate trainer so this is my LinkedIn profile and here I have almost 20 plus global certifications I am certified EC consultant instructor Microsoft certified trainer cybercrime intervention officer as a as a cyber mentor with EC Council Co-op Connect national security database so that's about my profile now let's see what we have in this course table of content we have these five lessons lesson one is understanding cloud computing concepts lesson two applying cloud business principles lesson three advising a cloud design and mitigation lesson four is operating in the cloud and lesson five is managing cloud governance so in lesson one it is understanding cloud computing concepts one of the result of frameworks like ITL is a need for individuals within the business that can effectively translate between business analysis and IT services so these are the five characteristics which are defined by NIST so NIST is going to design a lot of frameworks but when it comes to cloud this is the definition or these are the characteristics of cloud as defined by NIST so first is on-demand self-service consumers can provision resource as needed and automatically there's a broad network access services are available across the network from commonly available clients in resource pooling the CSP pools resources in a multi-tenant model so multi-tenant means it might be shared with multiple organizations and adjust resource allocation on an on-demand basis the specific distribution of hardware resource are abstracted from the consumer in rapid velocity resource or provision and release to adjust for the change in demand and consumption this process may be automatic or manual in major services metering of resources monitored controlled and billable so on demand is you know that you know the service is being provided to you on demand you can create those resources as per your demand as needed and it will happen automatically you don't need to get in touch with the CSP I mean you don't need to get in touch with some person you just go to your account and create a resource and there's a broad network is, uh, access so these services are available across networks from commonly available clients you might connect to the cloud from your PC from your laptop from your phone smartphone from your tablet and you can do the pooling so pooling is you can search what resource you need you have an overview of all the resources in your account and rapid elasticity like an elastic 
you are going to uh, I mean stretch it or release it as per the requirement so same goes here if you ask for more or you ask for less cloud is going to meet that and metered service so whenever you start any uh, service so what will happen there's a meter which is going to check your usage and you are paying only for what you use these are the cloud service models we have software as a service the consumer is provided with a direct use of software so let's assume you are an end user you will pay for the software which is designed by the cloud you are paying monthly for that office 365 for platform as a service let's assume you are a developer now you need to develop an application for your Android phone you go to the cloud provider they are going to give you a platform so that you are going to design that application because you are not worried about what network what security all that will be done by the CSP and when it is infrastructure as a service the hardware infrastructure is provided to the consumer so you are being given the infrastructure you can customize the infrastructure you are given a space in the cloud you design your own network you design your own subnets you decide what services you want you decide how they communicate so you do more of customization so that's a benefit cloud components and clients so client means of access to the cloud services for consumer so how you access the service and you also see there's a cloud service provider data centers that is going to host those cloud services so three things which are very important for the data center is which you're going to learn later one is your power and one is your cooling and one is your networking so every data center is given an extra power cooling and network or a different power cooling and network to each data center for redundancy network is a path between cloud services and client devices so these are cloud deployment models one's a private cloud which serves only to the single organization so if you are a single organization like OpenStack you can what you can do is you can have a hardware which is dedicated to you only maybe you are a bank you are very much concerned with the security so you are having a dedicated hardware or you go to public cloud this hardware is shared between multiple organizations multi tenancy because at that time data is not very important but money is very important you are very much concerned about money so it is being little cheaper or it is free so CSP owns the cloud deployment and allocates resources to external unaffiliated customers those customers share the public clouds resources without knowing precisely where their data is in relation to that of other organizations you don't have much control here our community cloud services uh, it serves several organizations that may have similar service need but are otherwise autonomous so some banks some universities some organizations which have similar interest they might be using community cloud or hybrid cloud is the combination of two or more of the private public or community cloud so sometimes you can you know use any of the previous uh, clouds to create a hybrid cloud SDN is a software defined network structure that permit admins to manage networking in a more dynamic and flexible manner than traditional hardware based networking with SDN the control plan is removed leaving each network device with only a data plan so what do you in SDN you are going to remove the control from all the devices and then you will have a centralized control so you don't allow those devices to control data but they can simply forward this data but you can have a centralized control so you have more control over your network with SDN compared to traditional approach secure shell is going to provide a secure connection between two endpoints where attackers cannot do man the middle attack they cannot do uh, uh, you know on path or adversary in the middle attack because it is getting encrypted not like TL uh, not like telnet or FTP RDP was designed by Microsoft to provide a secure means by which remote windows GUI could be accessed so this is how you can uh, connect to uh, let's assume you have a server you want to connect the server remotely now it is not possible for you to go to the server physically but remotely you can control that server or HTTPS provides encryption for web based connections earlier we had HTTP there was no security so all that traffic was uh, you know not getting encrypted now it creates a tunnel the sites the those sites when you connect them 
they share a digital certificate with you they share a public key with you so you encrypt that data storage types on cloud you have a regular hard disk drive storage inside your computer for example we store data as a file you also might use block storage which divides the store data into blocks and those blocks can then be stored across different media in object store it relies on metadata describing the stored content to retrieve and reassemble the data for the user now with object store it is very easy to retrieve because you might be defining different metadata for that particular data so like you know who is the author what time it was stored so maybe you can when you try to pull the data you can define I want to pull the data from this author so it's more of customization when it comes to retrieving that data software defined storage permits admins to define storage configuration and policies so you can also define here uh, the configuration in storage policy content delivery network is dispersed content which is geographically and then so that content to consumer from nearest content provider you might have seen you know in AWS they make use of those edge locations for example you want to share a video with someone now they don't need to come to uh, an origin but you can provide a edge location which is near to them so the content will be served to them maybe to reduce latency so they can see that content quickly <coughs> scaling so whether you go scale up scale out and all so in the cloud you have elasticity or the ability to increase or decrease a technology's capability it is very important component of any cloud solution being elastic so you can either shrink it or you can release it as per the requirement same goes for cloud you ask for more or you ask for less so that you only pay for what you use it's being elastic scale out is adding more resource in the distributed environment so there is scale in and there is scale out so what you do you increase the number now I have one server I'll ask for one more server I'll ask for one more server so I am increasing the number if I increase the number that is scale out if I reduce the number that is scale in but what is scale up you increase the capacity earlier this has only 1 GB RAM now I'm asking for 4 GB RAM earlier it was only 1 TB hard disk now I'm asking for 8 TB hard disk so you are increasing the capacity that is scale up when you reduce the capacity it is scale down risk management and design aspect in the cloud is a redundancy that refers to having more than one resource available in the event of the failure of a resource so redundancy is having some something extra if you have one server now you have two servers you are being redundant high availability refers to the measure of downtime for a given service so having as little downtime as possible disaster recovery refers to the ability to restore services in the event of failure so if it's a failure how you restore those services it all will be decided in the disaster recovery there's a disaster recovery plan there's a disaster recovery team there's a disaster recovery policies and then you got RPO RPO deals with how much backup how much your backup frequency should be the quantity of time between the most recent backup and the disaster for example on Sunday you're taking a backup on Monday you're taking a backup on Tuesday you are taking backup so on every day you are taking a backup let's assume on Tuesday there is a disaster okay now you are on Wednesday okay so on but you are you are supposed to take backup every day on Tuesday there is a disaster so you took a backup on Monday you took a backup on Tuesday you are supposed to take a backup right but there is a disaster now what will happen on the Tuesday or uh, let's assume not on Tuesday because you're taking a backup every day disaster happens here somewhere between Monday and Tuesday so how much you are supposed to take backup on Tuesday but in the middle there's a disaster now you don't have this much data you have data till Monday but you don't have data from here to this between Monday and Tuesday so how long you can survive without the data being available to you is your RPO recovery point objective and recovery time objective is let's assume it takes up to Wednesday to come back that's your RTU how much time it takes you to recover from the disaster 
after that you will be doing some uh, testing and all that that's your work recovery time and the total RTO plus WRT gives you MTD maximum tolerable downtime so RTO specifies how quickly recovery needs to occur to maintain business continuity now that was <clears throat> lesson one so let's see lesson two applying cloud business principles so no those concepts which we learned so far the NIST characteristics of cloud we are going to connect them with how it's going to help us now cloud provides you on-demand self-service how it's going to help your business the service allows organizations to make decisions for expenditures based on the current need so if cloud gives you an on-demand self-service then as an organization you can make decisions for expenditures based on current need now cloud gives you a broad network access as a business you may now be more physically dispersed to include many more work from home options for your employees because it's a broad network access you can connect them from anywhere with any options you have like you know VPNs uh, or, or you know mostly you connect them with VPNs but you have other options also but here it means that now you have more physically dispersed to include many more work from home options for employees resource pooling organizations can make better use of their existing hardware by leveraging cloud technologies because you can pool those resources rapid lastly this allows business to shift focus more quickly and to react with greater agility to change in the marketplace with measured service operating expenditures are reduced by billing consumers only for the actual services and the capacity that has been consumed right so those are the benefits of those cloud characteristics and how you can use them for your business now what are the benefits of these three service models to your business if you see software as a service where you can pay per subscription so as a result it will result in a simplified pay as you go licensing model and offloads the software support to the CSP because CSP will take care of everything but as a platform as a service it provides your business with a flexible standardized and usable development environment without the need for IT staff or developers to build and maintain platform support so the platform support will be taken care by your cloud provider as a developer you don't need to worry about what network what uh, security because all that will be taken care by the cloud provider you are a developer so you are concerned with how to develop your applications infrastructure as a service provides the organization with agile and scalable hardware platform from which server admins can create servers quickly and easily so business and four cloud deployment models there's a private cloud what is the benefit of private cloud business can retain control of their data while still leveraging cloud technologies so you can have more control because it is dedicated to you in the public cloud organizations can benefit from public cloud deployments by realizing cost savings so you can save cost because it might be free community cloud two or more organizations are permitted to use and deploy an exclusive cloud solution so you can trust because that organization is in same business or they have same security need or hybrid cloud organizations can take advantage of the best of both deployments <clears throat> professional services time to market means the quantity of time between when a service is or product is imagined and when it's available to customers so here with the cloud it is going to reduce that time to market which is very much needed SLA will specify what is the support information so if you see the SLA from any cloud provider it will give you an idea about what's the response time from the cloud provider what will be the uptime guarantee what's the penalty how much credits you'll be getting for a particular service managed service provider allows organizations to outsource management related to the cloud deployment so some organizations might need a third party organization which is managed service provider so that they can outsource their management related task to them so these are some documents you need to remember them so one is the request for information now let's assume you need a cloud provider you are an organization okay you have to choose a cloud provider now RFI is a standard method of gathering written document regarding the services capabilities potential cost support and training services and other factors that may be used in determining whether a particular CSP is valuable choice for your organization to engage so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to find 
I have a lot of cloud providers. I have GCP, I have AWS, I have Azure. So let me see who is going to meet my demand, right? Like who is going to meet, or, or sorry, here in RFI, what you're going to find is you are going to find information about those cloud providers. What kind of information? What are their services? What are their capabilities? What is the cost, support, and training, and all that? So you just research about those cloud providers. Then you send a document which we call request for proposal. So RFI, maybe you choose here two cloud providers. One is going to be AWS and one is going to be Azure. So you send them an RFP, request for proposal. Hey, Mr. AWS, hey, Mr. Azure, you're going to send them this document. The, it outlines what is the project, what's, the, what's my budget. So you as an organization are going to define, this is my project, this is my budget, this is my timeline, and this also defines what is my need. Okay, it goes to, to those two guys, AWS and Azure. And then you send in the document which we call request for quote. So it invites potential vendors to bid on the project. Maybe you're just sending them other document and you're inviting them for bidding. It's more heavily focused on the cost, right? So here you can see which among them is going to provide those services with less cost and then you choose that vendor right so you need to remember these three documents a request for information here you know about all the cloud service providers then you send them a proposal and then you send them the quote so proposal is more of your budget and all that quote is more of your pricing cost service documents so even if you do penetration testing you might have heard about these documents as or any project statement of work is detailed project management document that clearly defines all aspects of a given project it's a detailed document it's going to define all aspects of a project but SLA what is the expected level of service from vendor if they are not able to meet their service they might give you some credits there's also open source and property solutions we know about what you know what's open source and what's property so open source means many cloud service providers have created property solutions to offer to their customers others utilize open source you can do more of customization you'll be getting that code and all in open source so in the cloud there are a lot of expenditures there's a capex or capital expenditure that represents the cost the business must endure to cover land building and hardware so one-time cost if you purchase a car that's going to be capex how much time money you spend in purchasing the car but cloud mainly uses opex day to day business cost so now here you're not buying a car but you're just renting it because you may you need it only today not every time so if you get a car you have to use it every day so that's why you purchase it but maybe you don't want to use it every day but just one week one month or maybe a few days today tomorrow or you pay only for what you use fixed cost represents the cost of maintaining the IT infrastructure but variable cost is going to change based on the amount of output okay is it fixed cost or is it variable cost licensing model so in the cloud there are a lot of licenses there is a perpetual license which permits software to be used indefinitely it's a permanent purchase of the right to use the software software to be used indefinitely so if you want to use software indefinitely you go for this license but if you don't want to use it indefinitely then you go for subscription licensing so it's a standard for cloud most licenses are per pay month or per pay year when you go for subscription you're paying per particular month the way you know when we take a subscription like OTT and all bring your own license plans are used for software service or operating system for which your organization already owns a license so if you have already uh, purchased a license for any operating system you can use it when you create a virtual machine so you're going to save some money contract here are some uh, specific areas to address so data ownership it should be explicitly stated that business owns the data and the data must be returned immediately upon request. As per data security, it should be explicitly stated that data is secured. Such security usually includes backup, protection against data risk, redundancy, 
data center locations at all. Intellectual property, it should be explicitly stated that business's process and designs belong to its solely and may not be duplicated by the CSP. Service level, appropriate service level should be defined to specify the availability of business functions. Service availability, ensure that data and service are available to customers at all the times. Disaster recovery business continuity, it should be explicitly stated that disaster recovery and data continuity plans are in place. Fee, the fee involved with pay as per you go or pay per use model should be explicitly stated. Termination, the termination should also be explicitly stated. So you got to explicitly state all of that, you know, whether it's a termination, is a fee, is a disaster recovery, is a service level or, you know, any of that. Billing, most cloud service providers adhere to pay as per you go or pay per use models and will bill accordingly. So you are going to pay only for what you use. Active virtual machines, whether they are in use by your organization or not, are built for their uptime. So billing will also define how long your machine is up. So that's why it's recommended. If you not use the services, you might just pause them. You might stop them to save some money. Human capital, consider the following specific areas for professional development. Cloud security, security in the cloud differs from traditional on-prem data security. Deployment for cloud ready applications include different concerns than on-prem development. DevOps becomes more flexible in cloud deployment. Migration, there are many technical issues to address when migrating service application or data to cloud and most IT team members don't have experience with migrations. When it comes to administration, day-to-day -day administration may be significantly different in cloud deployment. Many traditional services such as Microsoft Active Directory now have cloud integration components that are new and unfamiliar. So this could be a little challenge when it comes to security, development, DevOps, migration, administration. It could be a little different than what you do in traditional environment. When it comes to cloud expenditures, compute cost represents the use of processor time and RAM utilization allocated to virtual machines. It also includes the cost of licensing. Storage cost represents the total quantity of storage allocated to your business as well as what type of storage is it. At the back end, does it use hard disk or SSD? Network cost includes the cost of network hardware like router, software, the maintenance and redundant internet connectivity. You know, when you need it, uh, you might also be paying for redundant internet connectivity but it's going to save you, you know, in, in case of disaster and all that. Other costs include utilities such as power to the data center, internet connectivity, temperature control and all that, right? So, which I mentioned earlier, for a data center, you need power, cooling and network. So, what are instances in the cloud? These are different types of instances. There could be a reserve instance that are hardware profiles that your organization commit to usually for a period of one or three years. So there is a reservation where you can save some money because you are reserving those because you know that you're going to need them for next three years. So if you reserve them, you are going to save a lot of money, maybe 40%, maybe 60%. It depends on the cloud provider. There's also a spot instances. These are the hardware profiles that may be currently unused by CSP or CSP's other customers and are made available to your organization at a significant discount. So you should look for spot instances. Maybe you're doing some testing. They might provide you these instances at a very cheap price. It's some sort of bidding. But if someone pays more than what you're paying right now, they might just give you a notification and take that uh, machine. So it is spot instance, only for testing. You might you know, save some money. But there's also dedicated instances. These are built on pay per hour structure and the hardware is dedicated solely to the purchaser. Or if you need, if your need is that you need a dedicated instance, you can go for that also. It all depends on what your what is your need. Do you need reservation? Or do you need spot instance for testing at all? Or do you need a dedicated instance? And now you have different types of charge. <clears throat> so chargeback builds business unit for the IT services that they consume. CSP provides you an option of tagging or the ability where you can label a particular cloud resource in a flexible and customized manner. So what is the benefit of tagging? 
when you pull those resources it will be easy for example you define the tag that the owner of this resource is Mr. Admin now when you want to pull those resources you can just define Mr. Admin it's going to pull all the resources which are being created by that admin your organization can also design a tagging strategy that can associate consumption with departments projects owner cost center so you can also apply tag to a department to a project and then when you pull them you can understand how much cost each department is spending these tags are then used to report consumption which can then generate chargeback okay so that's about lesson two now we'll move to lesson three advising a cloud design and migration cloud design and migration with respect to five characteristics as de defined by NIST so when it comes to on-demand self-demand a cloud service design must take into account the self-service component of the cloud when it's a broad network access you can anticipate a significant increase in internet traffic with the implementation of a public or hybrid cloud deployment model when it comes to resource pooling CSP takes advantage of economies of scale and they distribute the workload of their customers across data center hardware when it comes to rapid elasticity cloud design should also take advantage of ability to scale resource consumption when it comes to measured services by using the reporting and billing features of the CSP your organization can achieve a much more detailed understanding of how resources are used and by which business units so this is how you connect them with you know when you want to design a cloud when you want to uh, advise a cloud design and migration how you can use those characteristics to your advantage now cloud design migration with respect to three service models when it's software as a service the opportunity to a design or migrate software solution from local installation to a cloud based software as a service gives organization the chance to rethink how software is managed when it comes to platform as a service platform as a service designs tend to be more focused than software as a service or IES because of the target audience you know it's for developers database admins or all infrastructure as a service the design or migration to IES cloud deployment model is very complex project so these cloud design migration and the four deployment models when it comes to private cloud your organization retains the control of physical data center in a private cloud when it comes to public cloud designing a public cloud deployment or migration should be done in conjunction with the cloud service provider when it comes to community cloud the design of community cloud environment must take into account the need of each part spending organization when it comes to hybrid cloud the design of hybrid cloud solution begins with establishing which services will be provided in the private cloud and which will be done in the community cloud for example you have a website now you want to keep your database in a public uh, in, in a private cloud but you want to keep your site in a public cloud cloud migration phases organizations will usually divide the migration into phases so first you got to do the discovery of resources then you see the suitability of resource for cloud deployment then you need to do the mapping of application and services to the cloud then you do migration of servers services and applications to the cloud then you think about operational support of cloud services so it has to be done in those phases cloud assessment or feasibility study is one of the early steps in cloud design process this assessment is deliberate and step-by-step -step examination of organization readiness for cloud migration most of the cloud providers they give you a lot of options on when you do when you want to migrate to the cloud so how they make it easy for you IT infrastructure the current IP infrastructure must be examined to determine how prepared is it for the cloud migration orchestration is the complete deployment of a service beginning with the standing up of a virtual machine all the way to the point of users gaining access to the fully configured system so in orchestration it is all those steps you want to uh, be done in automation but in a proper sequence there are a lot of tools documentation the cloud assessment phase is excellent opportunity to ensure documentation is current and accurate you know what you will be doing it has to be documented to make things easy key stakeholders it is important to recognize the key stakeholders during the assessment portion of your cloud design and migration the following steps to work with key stakeholders first you identify the key stakeholders 
then you organize the stakeholders by the role governance operations business management or IT then you identify business need that you can communicate to the stakeholders in terms that are meaningful to them and address their concerns then you include additional information such as timeliness then you establish a means of communication point of content contact the assessment phase is excellent opportunity to establish a single point of contact for any questions concerns or ideas it happens also when you do penetration testing so there also you need to have a point of contact you also need to do gap analysis it is a deliberate study of whether IT technology in case this cloud technology is being used to its fullest potential there may be a gap in the current business use of a cloud service versus the potential benefit of the service you can also make use of managed service provider that can be particularly helpful during the assessment phase if you don't understand it fully you can take help of your managed service provider these are, these are the evaluations first is the pilot program it's a small scale project to test logistics prove the value of migration and reveal any weakness in the deployment then you see the success criteria this allows you to decide that a project meets its objective then you define the benchmark this is the way for business to estimate the result of a given change then you have proof of concept this confirms the functionality of deployment is successful then you got proof of value so it establish whether the deployment provides value to the business then you got initial design concepts so budgeting for cloud will bring your organization to pay as you go strategy that is subscription based service level the cloud design process must also address the required level of service the cloud assessment helps to define these levels then you got industry regulations the cloud design must reflect any specific industry standards regulations or laws that apply so this comes you know when you think of initial design so now there's a disaster migration so first thing is redundancy consider redundancy in four areas business business process redundancy you need to have a hardware redundancy network redundancy and geographic redundancy you know having extra of those extra hardware extra network extra geography maybe some other geography and then business process high availability refers to computer systems that are likely to operate for a very long time very less or very little downtime disaster recovery means that downtime has already occurred and the issue becomes how quickly can service be restored point uh, rpo is the measure of age of files to be recovered and rto a period of time when which service must be restored following a disaster so how much time you have to recover back if there's a disaster you know we already discussed you need then a double work recovery time where you do testing and then the whole thing is what we call mtd what is cloud migration so there are three different kinds of cloud migrations is it your on-prem to cloud are you doing cloud to cloud migration or is it from your cloud you're going to go to on-prem now on-prem to cloud most of the times you go for this migration sometimes you might change a cloud provider or sometimes it is from cloud to prem maybe you did not uh, see those advantages for which you did the migration now you're coming back <coughs> or it might be needed by your standard so these are the phases of cloud migration first you do planning then you do implementation the cloud deployment implementation is the actual transfer of data services and all to the cloud then you do optimization and security so the final component in migration is the optimization of services and the process to ensure that they are functioning as effectively and as cost effectively as possible so these are your seven migrations you need to have a little bit of idea so first is rehost this is also called lift and shift there's no modification application is cloud ready so you just lift and shift it to the cloud or sometimes you do replatform you lift tinker and shift so that means you do a little bit modification to the application and then you shift to cloud refactor rip and replace application will be entirely reacted to be cloud ready so maybe you need to redesign that refactor or repurchase application is retired and replaced by a modern cloud ready application this is drop and shop or retired application is retired and not replaced or return application will be kept on prem in a traditional deployment or hybrid mix of those so your organization cloud deployment will probably be divided into several distinct phases so it is very important you know that those uh, cloud migration types seven types of migration 
and rehosting, replatform, refactor, repurchase, retire or retain. Cloud native applications you have microservices. Cloud native applications are made up of microservices. These microservices are small, simple and autonomous from each other and loosely coupled. Containers or the virtualization at the operating system level such that a single operating system is partition partitioned and used for multiple applications so what you do you have those docker uh, those uh, or to say uh, docker containers or maybe you will have some sort of uh, what to say is it's going to manage those uh, containers so in every container you can just create those applications and uh, how you create those containers how you maintain them what will happen if there's a crash so maybe docker engine is going to take up that you know container manager like docker engine is going to take care of that but those applications are not specific to any operating system but they might be platform independent machine learning and artificial intelligence csps are investing heavily in both machine learning and artificial intelligence these services may be used in fields such as customer service fraud detection business intelligence or image recognition big data is the name given to the host immense quantity of data is given to the hosting immense quantity of data as well as analyzing the data for information useful for business so that's where we have a lot of data generated by a lot of sensors like you know, might have seen iot or big data hadoop you know and all that customer facing services you have subscription services cloud service provide may uh, cloud services may provide digital marketing benefits it's important to be able to access customer data effectively and accurately subscription for your customers your organization relationship with a csp subscription service your cloud deployment however can also permit you to host subscription services with your customers evolving business services autonomous environment in cloud services the term autonomous environment refers to the elimination of human role right you're doing more of automation iot is uh, the one use of iot is home automation in agriculture iot and cloud services have been combined to provide various benefits with iot and cloud the sensors are widely dispersed while processing of the gathered data occurs in the cloud so that's how cloud comes to your rescue when you're talking about iot blockchain is a technology originally built to manage uh, bit uh, coin transfer it is a data integrity system that requires transaction so all those blocks you know uh, they have a link with each other so to prevent from unauthorized modification because when you collect a hash in one block you're going to store in other so if there's any unauthorized modification it might not be accepted cloud collaboration uh, collaboration organizations may found a greater opportunity for collaboration due to high degree of accessibility inherent in cloud solutions collaboration as a service in I, uh, software as a service solution that combines telephony email instant messaging video conferencing or other collaboration tools to provide greater opportunity to the client desktop as a service offloads the vdi hardware and operating system management to the csp so you need to have a little bit of idea what does it mean digital marketing uh, di digital cloud marketing so digital cloud marketing brings together many marketing services into one like email social media personalized re uh, relevant de uh, delivery all available as a cloud services from the major cloud service providers now we are reaching to module 4 and after that we have last module which is module 5 <coughs> so let's see module 4 operating in the cloud cloud concept and technical operations so on demand self service now we are connecting that with operations one of the operational feature of cloud service is the ability to offload the creation and management of resources away from the cloud IT admin directly to the employee. So with broad network access, IT operations may must carefully monitor and secure internet access between the premises and the cloud services. With resource pooling, VMs are viewed as a disposable resource in a cloud environment. With rapid elasticity, monitoring of cloud-based resources takes on additional significance due to its rapid elasticity. With major service, pay-as-you-go model of cloud services makes it important to keep track. So these could be some challenges. Those benefits, those uh, characteristics could be some challenge in, you know, while operating in the cloud. So technical operations uh, with respect to three service models, software as a service, day-to-day -day administration and support of applications in a software as a service deployment is generally offloaded through the CSP. In platform as a service, day-to-day -day admin and support for development platform like python or microsoft visual studio or usually offloaded the csp along with the patch in ias operations and management of vms 
change with the cloud deployment. Technical operations with respect to four models for a private cloud. These operations change the necessary admin skill set from managing individual server deployment to managing data center. With public cloud, day-to-day -day operations take place through dashboards provided by CSP. With community cloud, the operational burden may be distributed across multiple organizations. Security and redundancy needs should be similar for all community members which are you know, involved in this community cloud. Hybrid cloud operation, uh, operations departments will likely to be responsible for the combination of cloud deployment models. Data management, so we have replication. Data replication allows business to move data to where it can be utilized more effectively. You can replicate that data to multiple sites, to multiple locations. Backup and recovery, cloud storage may be used for data backup. When it comes to data gravity, that states that more data mass that exit, the harder it is more that data. So that's also very important, you know, when you think of migration. So data gravity is very important. More data that exit, that exists, the harder it is to move that data. Locality, the concept of locality is laid to data gravity. Locality means that CPU processing power is brought to the data rather than the other way around. Data compression, to reduce the file size. Duplication, to remove the duplicate copies. You know, when it comes to storage capacity, you remove the extra redundant piece of information. Availability, so you have in most of the cloud providers, they make use of availability zones. The availability zones have independent data center that process their own power, cooling and network connectivity. So I discussed earlier also, every data center will have a different power source, different cooling source and different network source to protect those data centers from similar power failure or similar network or similar cooling failure. Geo redundancy is going to replicate data or service between two regions. So every cloud provider will give you multiple regions and then geo redundancy is where they replicate. You can replicate uh, the data and uh, that region will be defined for you. Disposable resource with cloud computing servers are virtualized and don't exist as physical device at the custom level. customer level. Pay as you go model encourage this practice. Use only the resource you need for as long as you need them and then quit using them. Treating virtual servers as disposable resource means that an orchestrated deployment model must be used to keep the server creation and configuration process efficient and consistent. Monitoring and visibility, here you got uh, alerts and logging. Every cloud provider will give you alerts and logging. Your organization will need to track cloud utilization data. The first step in monitoring cloud utilization is to identify what information is important to track. There are many aspects of logging. Alerts may be configured to notify admin or business process owners if there's exceptional utilization or of downtime. Like maybe your billing goes high, you can create an alert for that. Or system is going to be you know down or something. When it comes to optimization, it's very important you have right sizing. When you purchase a new computer, you verify its hardware specification against the workload. You anticipate it having support. The process of fine-tuning a virtual machine to better match its actual workload is called right-sizing. Now in the cloud, they might provide you all the options. It's very important you choose a right size. Auto-scaling, manage the number of active servers in a deployment model based on the workload. Increase or decrease as per your uh, criteria which you define. Maybe if CPU is going to be above uh, 80%, add one server. If CPU is going to be down 30%, remove one server. Load balancer do exactly what their name indicate. They balance the workload among several servers. Cloud managed service providers. Some organizations opt to outsource the administration of their cloud services. Cloud managed service providers maintain expert staff are capable of remote monitoring and bill on a per user or per device basis. This management model makes IT cost predictable and frees the organization from having to maintain train and manage a cloud ID admin stop. So you can outsource that to a third party. <coughs> so understanding DevOps. DevOps is a set of practices that combine the development process with the operational function. Earlier they were separate when it is being developed. It goes for testing. There was a lot of uh, gap between them. Now it is being combined. Continuous integration, continuous delivery. It means the build and test functions of software development phase Continuous delivery manage the packaging and deployment function of the 
life cycle. Provisioning is when you create something. So DevOps emphasizes the use of automation for quicker and more consistent deployment. Infrastructure so, uh, code provides that capability. So you are going to create the infrastructure based on what you define that in the script or automation or in your code. IOC approach, I, IAC approach places configuration in machine readable files and also as a template infrastructure as a core templates may be created to simplify deployment so you have already defined that infrastructure so when you run that code it's going to create that infrastructure so you don't need to uh, manage that but it gets created as soon as you define that configuration management you have orchestration and automation orchestration process is made up of a series of automated events upgrading and patching there's a continuous delivery automates this process making it both simpler and more consistent than a manual process. In API integration, developers utilize application programming interfaces to permit portions of application to communicate with each other for communication between the two applications. So it acts as a gateway, you know, between two applications to communicate with each other. Like, you know, when you go and search for a weather in your phone, you just uh, click on that app. At the back end, it is going to check that uh, weather and then give that report to you. Maybe in the backend, it makes use of API. Testing in these environments, quality analysis. So sandboxing applications are tested in isolated environment that is not connected to the production environment. So sometimes, you know, when you have, when you'd be doing testing, you don't want that production to get affected. So you'll be using sandbox environment. Load testing applications are tested with a simulated demand to confirm that application does as desired so what you do here you're going to give some load and see how it's going to work in that stress regression revision to an application must not break existing functionality so when you what you do in regression testing when you try to introduce something new you're just trying to make it sure that the thing which you have uh, included uh, should not affect the functionality it should function as it was there's also a shared service model between you as a customer and the cloud provider so as per uh, every cloud provider have the, has this model it just defines what should be your role and what should be my role for example csp says that whenever we are going to st whenever you're going to store uh, data in the cloud i'm going to be responsible for physical security and you as a customer you're going to be responsible for what you store in the cloud your data and all that i'll take care of physical things physical security, but it all depends on the service model. Is it infrastructure as a service, platform as a service? It depends on that also, but mostly, you know, you can think of this as when you store something for, uh, in the cloud, it's your responsibility. Now let's do the security assessment. In the security assessment, we have threat. It is an activity that you are trying to protect your system or data from. Vulnerability is a weakness in the system service application, even a user that may be exploited. Risk is the potential for loss. So if threat is going to use the vulnerability, it can lead to risk. It's a potential for loss of data or service if a vulnerability is exposed by a threat. So that's where you do security assessment, you do penetration testing. This is authorized attack conducted by a third party security firm to assess and report the security level of your organization. You do vulnerability scanning to check the applications and services for security issues. A lot of tools, every cloud provider will provide you those tools or you do web application scanning. So web application scanning software connects to the web app site the same way a customer or attacker would and then search the site for vulnerabilities. Is it uh, vulnerable to cross-site scripting, cross-site request forgery, or is it vulnerable to uh, uh, SQL injections? So here, a lot of tools are available. For penetration testing, you might have a red team. There might be also a blue team as a defender and red team is going to be as attacker. In vulnerability scanning, there are a lot of tools, but I have seen in most of the clouds, they make use of Coilis. Coilis, there's a particular version which is designed to be run in the cloud. Otherwise, Scott Suite and all, every cloud provider will give you their own tools. Aquinetix works here uh, on, on you know web apps, but cloud providers will have their own tools. And then you can choose from the list whenever you need to run those web application scanning tools to see if a particular web application is vulnerable to any of those attacks. Hardening 
is to reduce the vulnerability and their asset risk by applying best practice configuration and tool to the system so when you talk about hardening so hardening is where you remove the default for example if you buy a router there's a default password you need to remove that you need to customize that in hardening data security when it comes to data security we got to understand the CIA tried so confidentiality means who should be able to access this data so it is very confidential only authorized people can access it so it is very confidential only authorized people can access it so that's where I create an email ID I can share the key with that person who needs to see that data integrity deals with modification who can modify with this data only authorized modification maybe I calculate a hash I share that hash with you you calculate hash on your end to see if there's unauthorized modification so normally when you do an uh, evidence uh, when you handle an evidence as a forensic investigator you might calculate a hash and prove that this uh, file is not being this evidence is not being tampered with or maybe you uh, uh, if you if you want to make some uh, game or some software available to someone you can create a hash you can keep that hash along with that software so when I download that software I can also check that hash to see if there's any unauthorized modification so encryption when you think of encryption you probably imagine keeping something secret from someone else is it symmetric where you make use of same key or is it asymmetric where you make use of different keys data breach is the accidental or deliberate exposure of data to unauthorized users then here you got three A's of security which are very important authentication we also write it like A U T H N for authorization we write A U T H Z and auditing so what is authentication authentication means that you say who you are you're, you're being authenticated so you are uh, your ID is getting validated so when you say my email address and password is this so authentication system is going to validate that and authorization system is going to see what are you authorized to do what permissions do you have auditing keeping a track maybe I can keep a track with the log so that if you violate your authorization I can give you a warning authentication is means of providing a user identity multi-factor authentication has typically been divided into three types something you know what do you know password something you have what do you have a card or token so we can send you a code or something you are like biometric you know you can make use of fingerprint to prove that you are who you say you are so we also make use of single sign-on this means that user must only authenticate once and then grant whatever level of access they have so authentication happens only once you are being authenticated only once then authorization you are get, getting a token on different services like the way when you log into your Google account now when you open Gmail when you open Google Drive Google Sites you don't need to do authentication again and again right so it makes use of single sign-on security and network connection so this is a VPN a VPN connection can be established to link your organization to the cloud service provider or you can also set up a direct connection cloud service providers can also help your organization establish a direct network connection between a CSP and your on-prem DNS is a distributed hierarchical database that relates these easy to remember names with difficult to remember IP addresses firewall is to control the flow of traffic within a single network so you might know about those terms so same way it applies to the cloud now let's go to the last module which is lesson 5 managing cloud governance with respect to five characteristics on-demand self-service policies and change management practice need to be modernized for self-service nature of the cloud when it comes to broad network access cloud resource or access from across the internet often business will not know what kind of device is accessing the resource so that's why you have zero trust models resource pooling some modern industries are heavily regulated and data stored must meet the security requirements like you know GDPR rapid elasticity rapid growth and development of resource means that change management and standard operating procedures must be current major service when it comes to major service cloud services are measured and then build on paper use model 
resource and change management must address these measures uh, address these major services to ensure these are there are no unexpected ch charges governance and three cloud service models when it comes to software as a service software uh, deployment should be governed by change management resource management and access control policies for platform as a service secure development practice should be implemented application should be developed to meet any compliance requirement IAS the management of a cloud based infrastructure should be governed by the use of standard operating procedure four deployment models with respect to governance private cloud such a deployment may be required based on industry regulation issue of data sonity or as a result of risk assessment you have to choose a public cloud it will depend on the appropriate measures must be taken to manage risk and to control access to resources for community cloud organizations may come together to develop a community cloud to maintain industry compliance for hybrid these are a mix of at least two or more above models risk assessment is a careful study to identify and address risk to your organization and your business process your customers and your systems classification of risk risk findings are classified classified by several categories based on what is the likelihood what is the chance what is the impact what is the consequence what is the cost to deal with the risk what is the response we want to accept the risk transfer the risk mitigate the risk asset inventory it may seem odd to maintain an inventory of cloud resource but it's very necessary data ownership one example of risk is data ownership in the cloud there is a risk of loss of ownership or control of data to the cloud service provider so that's why you have those risk matrix you no know, where you're going to see who is the owner owner of that risk risk response you can do mitigation risk mitigation means to take reasonable precaution to prevent a particular risk maybe you set up a control to remove to mitigate that avoidance seeks to keep the business out of pos uh, position to be affected by a given risk or you can sometimes accept risk to take no action to mitigate a risk or transfer the risk to other organization like you know when you purchase an insurance this is an example of how you transfer the risk risk documentation the this is a risk register the risk assessment will result in a risk register which is used to track identified risk and mitigation efforts there's also a vendor lock in there's a possible risk with cloud vendor lock in vendor lock in means that the organization is dependent on a csp and its property service you need to check those things you know before you choose a provider data portability is the transfer of data between the cloud providers understand compliance and cloud data sovereignty data is subject to regulations laws requirements of the country where it is stored this concept is called data sovereignty there is also some international standards that are defined by iso and certification cloud service providers allow their infrastructure to be independent they audit manage policies procedures for cloud services soap or specific step by step procedural document for standard task change management the approach address several areas including preparing the organization for change support during the change and help after the change resource management addresses the utilization of tangible resources and intangible something which you can touch or something which you cannot touch policies there is a security policy every organization should have a written security policy this is unique to that business and it states the company's security stance Instant response policy is step by step process for managing a specific security instance access and control policies are implemented to manage interaction between users and data communication policies govern the use of all communication media including email instant message texting phone calls blogging other social media so we know when there is a disaster which uh, communication media to use how to use when to use everything will be defined or department specific policies some departments within the organization may have unique requirements finance department for example may be held to regulatory standards that don't apply to a marketing department right so that is it about this cloud essentials and i know it was a little uh, bigger one uh, i'm not sure for how long maybe i think approx uh, one hour or four minutes i thought it's going to be two hours but yeah it seems like pretty in one hour i tried to complete 
that course content for CompTIA Cloud Essentials. Now there's an official book. So my uh, recommendation would be to go through the book to be able to understand this content. So once you go through the book, once you go through official labs, once you uh, go through practice questions, then you check this video. It is going to serve as an overview to understand this cloud CompTIA Cloud Essentials. Since I did this exam, so CompTIA Cloud Essentials, I'm also going to share with you guys how it looks like just for two minutes and I'm going to show you guys <coughs> CompTIA Cloud Essentials so once you go to this link here and then you will be able to find an official link which I was talking about earlier so when you uh, open this official link in this link you can uh, find all the details here you can go to this uh, site which says testing centers or online testing if you want to write this exam you need to have an account with CompTIA already have an account or you can directly go to login.comptia.org it will detect your email ID I'm already logged in I have given my email ID and password so here <coughs> you can check your certifications and then you can go to my certifications or you can check about your certifications here and then uh, you can just check this logo or you can uh, you know uh, say I agree and then uh, you can uh, download that CompTIA IT fundamental certification or also you can download the logo and the certificate here just to show you guys how it looks like for those who are planning to write this exam so let me show you guys how this looks like so logo I think I uh, I did I, or is it a I, yeah it's a logo and I also show you how certificate looks like so those who are new to this exam at least you will get an overview like you know I did this cloud essentials exam and uh, there's no expiry so that's the benefit there's no expiry and this is my certificate ID I'm sharing with you guys all the details here uh, which is about the exam a cloud essentials exam and the logo I've already downloaded it so if I go to this and show you guys how it looks like so let me extract this first extract here extract all let me extract this folder first to show you guys what kind of logos you will be able to see it so these are the logos okay you can use any of those logos IT fundamentals black or red in your resume or anywhere LinkedIn social media you can also find them in Credly. So this is how a logo looks like. IT Fundamentals. Compti IT Fundamentals. Sorry, this is Compti IT Fundamentals. But we were discussing about Cloud Essentials. Okay, how come I downloaded IT? Okay, this is Cloud Essentials. Okay, let me show you guys logos. Okay, I think I downloaded it from here. Cloud Essentials. Okay, not IT Fundamentals. I was supposed to download cloud essentials IT fundamentals is and their certification which you know if you want to do you can go for this also but let me show you cloud essentials very quick how the logo looks like and then we should be done with this let me extract it here extract all and then open this folder cloud essentials right so these are the logos these are the logos right cloud essentials how it looks like so you can use any of those logos in your resume in social media and that is it about this so uh, I wish you all the best uh, my objective is to discuss with you guys uh, an overview for all those exams from CompTIA I did IT fundamentals A plus network plus security plus CYC plus pen test plus now I'm planning for cloud plus and then uh, CAS plus then I should be done with CompTIA I'll go back to EC council and finish whatever is left with but my idea is to give you an overview which is going to be very helpful for the exam I already recorded uh, the course content related to A plus network plus security plus where I see a lot of good feedback is being very helpful that motivates me so that's the reason I come up with this one next I'll be coming up with uh, CYC plus and uh, pen test plus very soon so wish you all the best and with this I'm going to end this video thank you very much so please keep 
liking subscribing and sharing my channel and i am receiving good feedback thank you so much for the uh, motivation thanks see you again in next video